This week, we're learning one of the best tricks you could do for people with a normal borrowed deck of cards, and we're doing a contest and a giveaway of my brand new trick. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. And this week, we're doing an awesome, awesome tutorial for a great trick you could do with borrowed cards, just a normal deck of cards, and an epic giveaway. What we're learning today is one of the strongest things you can do. It's one of the most popular plots in Magic. And the version I'm gonna teach you is something that I came up with by mushing pieces of other tricks together. And it's just a killer three phase routine with normal cards. Now, before we jump into that and learn this amazing trick, step by step, I wanna to talk to you guys about my brand new release to the mentalism and magic community, which is ABC. This just came out last Friday, hit the market after years of preparing. And this is one of my proudest releases that I've ever put out in the market. It is an insanely cool mentalism effect with flashcards. So you've got some flashcards that, you know, we learn, we use to learn the alphabet that kids learn to use how to read and write with these amazing vivid uh, images. And it's a great system in there, hidden in plain sight where someone can pick one in their own hands and you know what it is. There's no electronics, there's no markings, there's no little hidden symbols, and this just fools everyone, including magicians. So the trailer dropped Friday, last Friday, and the product was available worldwide as of Friday. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give one away to one of the viewers, one of the subscribers is going to win one of these. But for those of you who are interested in purchasing this, I will leave a link in the description. Uh, also the trailer, I will leave a link to the trailer in the description. Please, please, please go watch the trailer. Look at the reactions this gets, and I'm sure you guys are gonna absolutely love adding this to your repertoire. It's one of my favorites. I always have it on me, and it gets insane reactions. But for right now, let's talk about the trick we're learning this week. So let's jump right into it right now, starting with the performance. We're gonna try something with a shuffled deck of cards. You guys can see, totally shuffled, yeah? yeah. Kathy, do me a favor, think of a number between one and 10. Lock it in your mind, don't say it. Let me know when you have one. One. Got it? Yeah. Cool. I'm gonna take 10 cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten random cards. And I'm gonna count through these cards and I'm gonna assign a number to each card. When I get to your number, think of the card that's in that position. Remember it. For example, if the number you were thinking of was one, remember the Queen of Spades. If you were thinking of two, King of Clubs. Mm -hmm. Three, Nine of Clubs. That's four, three of hearts. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the tenth one is the two of diamonds. Mm -hmm. So you are now thinking of a number and you know the card that's in that position, yes? Mm -hmm. You're the only one who knows this number. Nothing funny, I'm gonna put the cards down like this. Kathy, in a loud, clear voice, tell us what number were you thinking of? Seven. Seven? Yeah. I'm gonna count onto the seventh card, check it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. Now you remembered the seventh card, the one that's supposed to be right there. What was it? Ace of clubs. Ace of clubs. Ace of clubs. Kathy, what if I told you that that is not the ace of clubs? Well, that it should be. It should be, because yeah. that's what you saw there. Yeah. Take a look, turn it over. Ace of spades, oh, was it spades or? No, it oh, was clubs. It was clubs. 100% okay. clubs. Okay, here's the thing. That's impossible. It couldn't have been the ace of clubs because I don't keep the ace of clubs in this deck. You imagined it. The reason I know that is because I keep only one card in my pocket, right at the bottom of my pocket. I want you to see this right there, one card, always in my pocket. You saw the Ace of Clubs in that deck? Kathy, that doesn't make any sense because the card in my pocket <laughs> is the Ace of Clubs. Okay, well, it was here. <laughs> it, it wasn't there, it wasn't there. Okay, you know what, you know what? I, I can't put this past you. I think you're onto me. Here's what, I'm gonna be honest with you. It wasn't always in my pocket. I just have this skill that I've developed where once you say what your card is, I can very quickly get it out of there and put it in my pocket. I'll show you what I mean. Watch the Ace of Clubs. You could have thought of any card. Ace of Clubs, check it out, I'll do it again, watch. Just like that. No, it's not. Yeah. No, it's not. No, it is. Look, nothing in the hands, right? Nothing in the hands. Check it out. In, in the pocket, at the bottom of the pocket, one card. And I want you to see this guy. Look, I'll put it right here. I want you to see nothing, nothing else in the pocket, just this one card. You thought of the Ace of Clubs. It's the Ace of Clubs. 
<laughs> no, it is. Okay, but you know what? I'll, I'll be totally honest with you guys. I'm gonna tell you how I do it for real. For real, real this time. Here's how it gets to my pocket. It's not actually in the pocket. It's in my hands the entire time. I want you to see it. See, it's in the hand like this. It's hidden. This is called palming. It's hidden in the hand. And when I hold the cards like this, you can't see it. See, it's like this. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is I go to the pocket like this. I reach in. You, the card is right there. You don't see it. I reach in. I say, oh, see, I, the card's in my pocket. But I know what you're thinking. You're thinking my hand was empty when I did it the second time. But it, that's fine. Watch. The card goes in the hand like this. If I'm scared you'll see it, I just make it invisible. Mm -hmm. See, it's not there. But as I go to the pocket, that's when it What's becomes not? visible. Yeah, no, it is, it is. What was it, Ace of Clubs? No, it was, yes, but it was there and then it was <laughs> still there. No, see, freaking weird. <laughs> like, I'm looking and then it's there and then it's there after. Okay. There it was, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And as you know, I always like to give you guys a little bit of history to know where these tricks that we're learning come from. So there's a book called Stars of Magic. And if you're interested in magic, this is an absolute must. Basically, it's a collection of the best magicians in the world who each gave one trick that they love, like one of their top tricks to this book. So it's a collection of practical, strong effects and I can't recommend it enough. There's some real gems in there. And I will leave a link in the description if you're interested in getting this delivered right to you. It's not that expensive, and I really recommend it. it makes a great holiday gift for someone who loves magic or for yourself. In this book, there's a trick called Homing Card by Francis Carlyle, where a signed card jumps to the pocket twice. And it's so well constructed and it's brilliant, and that was the starting point of the trick we're learning today. So more than a decade ago, I was doing that, but I wanted to change a couple of things. I wanted it to be a card they were thinking of as opposed to one that they picked. So I changed some things. I took some ideas from Theodore Anneman. I took some ideas from Gregory Wilson's Card to Pocket. Just a couple of little things from here and there and put it all together, uh, added a couple of moves and came up with this routine that we're learning today. So we're gonna jump right into it step by step right now. And normally I teach you guys my tricks with the camera over the shoulder so you see what the hands are doing. But in this one, I'm gonna stay in this frame because it's very important for you to see what's happening between the hands and the pocket. So here we go, we're gonna jump right into it and learn this routine step by step. Grab a deck of cards, let's do this thing. Okay, so for this trick, you can use your own deck of cards or you can borrow a regular deck of cards. It doesn't even have to be a full deck of cards. I am using Wheelback Tally Hose. These are my favorite deck to use for magic. I will leave a link in the description to where you can get these as well. Absolutely love them, great quality. But again, it could be anything. As soon as you have the deck, whether it's borrowed or it's yours, all you have to do to prepare this, and you could do this subtly in the corner or you could do it literally right in front of them when no one's paying attention, the entire preparation is to take a random card, any card at all, doesn't matter what it is, and to put it in your right pocket. Of course, if you are left-handed, it's going in your left pocket. But for me, right pocket, right there. One card, anything, doesn't matter. Now you're ready to do the trick, that's it. To start the trick, you are going to have the deck mixed up, so you can either do this yourself or have your spectator help you shuffle. And you're going to turn over 10 cards. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Doesn't matter what it is, you're gonna turn them over like this. And you're gonna, as you're talking, you're gonna say, I've turned over 10 cards, and as you go show them, here's what happens. It's gonna look like I'm just closing it up and picking up the 10 cards, but I'm adding one card to that 10. So I spread like this. I go, see here, past the nine, there's one more card. My pinky is going to go under that extra card, and I'm gonna close up keeping that one extra card along with the 10, with my pinky under it like this, called a pinky break. And now I pick it up and they think I've only picked up 10, but I have 10 and secretly one more under it. Now I tell them to think of a number between one and 10. And I say, I'm gonna go through these cards one at a time. And when I get to the number you're thinking of, remember the card that's at that position. And I say, for example, if you were thinking of number one, remember the six of hearts. Now I take that first card, I turn it upside down and I place it under the deck like this. And I say, number two, seven of clubs. Number three is that one. Number four, remember that one. Number five, remember that one. Six, remember that one. 
seven, remember that one. So let's say in this case, they do think of seven and it's the ace of clubs. Let's just for now assume that they were thinking of number seven. So they're gonna remember the ace of clubs. Eight, nine, 10. So notice how they saw you turn over 10 cards and they don't know that there was one that was already face down at the bottom. So technically it was added to all the other cards. They have no clue that, that happened. It's a really convincing technique. And basically what it does is regardless of what card they're thinking of, it's not where they think it is. It's one further. So in this case, they remembered that the seventh card was the Ace of Clubs. You take these cards and you set them on top of the deck back like this, and you make sure they see you're not displacing anything. And you ask, what was the number you were thinking of? Not the card, the number. And in this case, they would say they were thinking of number seven. So you count on the table or even in their hands, it works so well in their hands, you count seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now they believe, sorry, I'll put these in frame. They believe that their card is there, the seventh card, but it's not because you added that card secretly, their card is actually here, the Ace of Clubs. But you're gonna put all the focus right there on that one. You're gonna say the seventh card was your card and all their focus is here. Now, presentation is up to you, but I like to say, what if that wasn't your card? And they go impossible, that's crazy, and I know, whatever. They turn that over. As they're turning that over, all their focus is there. You're going to palm the top card. Now, don't get nervous for those of you hearing palm because all the heat is there and your hand is going to be out of sight very quick. So I wouldn't worry about it. We're going to walk through this step by step. What I mean by palm is this. Your right hand is going to come over and your pinky is going to contact the top right corner of the deck here. Now, of course, if you're left-handed, reverse that. Pinky is going to come contact this corner. You're going to move forward a little like this and notice how that one card slides forward with the pinky and push down. And when I push down, the card pops right up into my hand. So I'll show you from this angle. My hand comes over, the pinky pu pushes up and I push and that just pops right into my hand like this. And don't worry if you have small hands, some of the best magicians in the world have very small hands and the card will still fit. But this is really a knack. It's something that with practice you'll get. Also remember the left hand, thumbs and fingers are gently holding the deck from the sides. That kind of helps you get that one card out and pop it into your palm like this. And immediately when you do that, like this, you even heard that, my hand holds the deck like this. Or like, or like this, doesn't matter, it's casual. They can't see that. All their focus is there. They turn that over, it's not their card. Now I say, the reason I know that that's not your card is because what was the card? And they've said, you know, you ask, what was the card? Ace of clubs. Yeah, no, it can't be. Because I always keep that in my pocket. So now I'm just gonna move to my pocket with my right hand like this. My fingertips are gonna go into the pocket and I'm gonna reach in and let the card fall to my fingertips. And notice how my hand doesn't go all the way into the pocket. You can but it just looks like my fingers reached in and pulled it out. Because basically in the pocket, what's happening is this, and as soon as my fingers are in, I'm letting that card slide down and I'm pulling it up. Of course, you can bring your whole hand into the pocket like this and take out the one card, whatever works for you. And now we show Ace of Clubs. They freak out, they think the trick is over. Now I say, okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I have a way to get whatever card you name really quickly from the deck to my pocket. Now you're gonna demonstrate that, and I love this phase. They've already seen the card come out of your pocket very fairly, so you need very little to convince them psychologically that you can do it again. Here's how it's gonna look. It's gonna look like you turn the Ace of Clubs over, you put it in the deck, you push it, and it's going to look like when you snap, it goes back to the pocket. Now the first part of that is, the Ace of Clubs never went into the middle of the deck. The way to do that is the following. The Ace of Clubs is face up on top. You're gonna turn it over like this, and it's going to look like you're pulling it into the middle of the deck, but you're not. That's a random card. Because what's happening is you pick up half the cards like this, your thumb comes on top to make it seem like you're peeling that Ace of Clubs off, but in that gesture of pulling, it's actually these two fingers the index and middle finger that are pulling this card out like that. But if you do that quickly, notice how it looks. There's the Ace of Clubs. 
Notice how it looks like I'm just pulling it right off the deck. Isn't that crazy? It just looks like, there it is, Ace of Clubs. And especially because I'm moving while I do it, it looks like I just pulled the Ace of Clubs off. Remember the thumb, very important that the thumb is on top because that's what makes it look like you pulled it off. The thumb remains on that card. So you put this back on top and it looks like the Ace of Clubs is going in the middle, but it's here. Now you show your hand empty, you reach into your pocket at the fingertips, so this really slow, really fair, and you pull out the card that you put there at the beginning of the routine. Remember we put a random card in there? You're pulling that one out. Now of course you can't show it now because it's not the Ace of Clubs. So you pull it out here. Now in their mind they think it already is, but you do this. Now if I would have just put it down on the deck to show it, it wouldn't make much sense. Here's what happens. I hold the card here and as they're looking at this, my left hand pushes that top card over and gets a pinky break under it like that. So just push, pinky. I show this here and I say, by the way, I want you to see there aren't a thousand cards in my pocket. So that's the reason I'm putting this down. And I go into the pocket and I say, look, there aren't a thousand cards in the pocket. There's just one. So that's a really good reason to put it down here to show. Now I'm gonna do a double turnover. So I'll leave some links in the description if you don't know what that is, double lift or double turnover. But essentially, because I have my pinky under that ace of clubs, now I just align this random card on top as I go to turn it over. And my finger is gonna come over like this and turn both of them over as one. So you're turning two cards over, the ace of clubs and the random one that was on top as one card. So it looks like you went into the pocket, you got the card out, you showed the pocket, and there it is, the Ace of Clubs. Now, when I do my double turnover, I've already explained this on the channel multiple times, I pull it backwards like this, so when I push forward, I can lift, sorry, I'm trying to do this slow, I can lift and I can get my pinky under both cards again. So I don't have to get ready for the second one. And that, I think here is very important. Turn it over towards yourself like this, and as you push, you lift so the pinky can go under the two cards like this. So there we are. Now, I'm going to, for the third phase, I'm going to say, okay, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you how I'm doing this. So you keep telling them, like you keep explaining to them, but then you keep ruining what you just explained. So I'm going to turn over the double, but again, towards myself because you don't want it to fall flush. So I pull back as I do this. So they're both falling back here. I'm going to lift with my thumb like this, advance, and I'm gonna hold both from the side like this and put both into my palm like this. And I'm gonna show them that it's in the palm. This, this is two cards. So now I'm holding the two cards in my hand, they think it's one, and I go, look, I hide your card in my hand like this, and I hold the deck like that. So they think now you're letting them in on the secret. And you say, very quickly, I go to my pocket, and you actually do, you go to your pocket, and you tell them I get the card out. You show it one last time here, you go there, now in the pocket what's going to happen is you're going to go in, you're going to leave the Ace of Clubs in your pocket and you're going to come out with that random card. Again, such a convincing moment. So you're here, Ace of Clubs, you go into the pocket and you say, and that's how I get your card to my pocket. So to them they think 100% that's the Ace of Clubs. Now you place that on top of the deck and you say, but I know what you're thinking, you saw my hand empty. That's because, and now we're going to do the Tent Vanish. The tent vanish basically is you're holding the card up like this with the thumb here. Your hand is going to come over and it's going to look like you're putting the card in the hand like that. But what's actually happening is the moment your hand comes here, you're just dropping the card on top of the deck. And you drop it there and you say, I know you're thinking I showed you my hand empty. That's because if you just give it a shake like this, you can make it look like the card is invisible. Now, of course, you can show the top of the deck. The Ace of Clubs isn't there if you want to but I don't even bother with that because immediately I go into the pocket and at this point their brain just stops working and you reach in and you pull out the card, bam, ace of clubs. So there it was, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Once again, I know it's quite a lot to take in but it's not difficult, it's just there's a lot of phases but put in the practice and I promise it's gonna be well worth it because you're gonna have this killer routine you could do anywhere with any deck. Now let's jump to the contest where one of you is going to win a copy of my brand new effect, ABC, which is a killer tool that's gonna allow you to read people's minds and really get inside their heads anytime, anywhere. 
This is one of my favorite releases ever. It's always on me and the method is so invisible. Nobody will ever figure this out. You guys are going to love this and I'm so excited for you guys to have this. Here are the contest rules. First and foremost, you have to be subscribed to the channel. Second, in the description, I've left a link to the trailer of ABC that was released just this last Friday. Brand new trailer. Go to that trailer, watch it, and let me know in the comments of that trailer what you thought of the trailer, what you think of ABC. Do not mention the contest there. Then come back to this video, and in the comments of this video, let me know what is the trick that you've learned on from me, whether it's on the channel, whether it's something you bought, maybe you already have ABC, although I doubt it because we're two days after release. What is the trick you've learned from me that you use the most, and tell me how you use it do you have a story of when you used it? I love to hear how you guys are using the stuff we learn, whether it's on the channel or my releases. So let me know which trick you use the most and how you use it. If I see both those comments on the trailer and here, you'll be entered into the contest. I wanna say this, very important. I'm gonna pick a winner really quickly, two days. By Tuesday, I will pick a winner and I will comment on your comment. I will reply to your comments to let you know you won. So check back on Tuesday. If you have a response, you're the winner. If you're watching this video after Tuesday, the contest is over, but please, please still go watch the trailer. Still comment. Let me know what tricks you use because I'd love to hear back from you guys. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you guys will have an awesome holiday season and I'm going to try to upload, although I'm really busy. I'll try my best and I'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs>